Robots clean gutters, vacuum floors, wash our windows, dance for our amusement, make for incredibly clean pets, and have even been roped into teaching our kids. Suckers. But well before Fritz Lang's Metropolis, a world full of robotic assistants had already captured the human imagination. Greek myths of Hephaestus say that he built the giant bronze guardian Talos for King Minos of Minotaur fame. As mechanical clocks became more common in the 15th and 16th centuries, automatons flourished and found homes in everything from religious services to drinking games. These aren't robots in the modern sense of the word, sure, but it's a pretty clear line from Al Jazari's elaborate 12th century hand-washing machines to the Roomba that cleans your floor without human interference. By the 19th century, Charles Babbage was creating machines capable of performing complex mathematical calculations, and Nikola Tesla was showing off a remote-controlled boat. Tesla imagined militarized swarms of his telautomatons armed with warheads. This violent vision, combined with the growing intelligence of machines like Babbage's difference engine, posed a moral dilemma. Isaac Asimov was inspired partially by that looming danger and the science fiction tales of Adam Link, a self-aware robot to write the laws of robotics. In 1950, Alan Turing explored the growing intelligence of robots further by outlining a test that could determine when a computer had learned to think, just like a human. You make up these questions, Mr. Holden? They write them down for you. Meanwhile, robot research marched forward. Okay, shuffled forward. Or rolled. She automatically runs home to her kennel for charging up. Anyway, by 1964, robots had found their niche on the factory floor. The Unimate was the first of the industrial robots, and General Motors put it to work on the assembly line, leading the way for human-free manufacturing. The 1960s were a golden age for fictional robots. Silence, you preening popinjay! But more importantly, a pioneering era for computer science. The Stanford Research Institute built Shaky, the first robot that was able to understand and navigate its environment. And MIT had its own artificial intelligence darling in Eliza, an early example of natural language processing that eventually inspired Siri. Show my photos from last June in San Francisco. Oh yeah. But in the 70s and 80s, as the recession set in and factory automation meant less jobs for low-skill workers, the popular representation of robots turned bleak. I've seen things you people wouldn't believe. But in the 1990s, IBM's Deep Blue supercomputer showed just what artificial intelligence was capable of. It defeated world chess champion Garry Kasparov in their first matchup. Though Kasparov's subsequent three victories and two draws showed the machines just who is still in charge. By 2000, humanoids started to take off. Honda introduced a walking assistant called Asimo that mimicked human form and motion. And with each successive model, it only became faster, smarter, and more human-like. In the past two decades, robots have helped humans reach the depths of the ocean and the far reaches of Mars. They can assist in surgeries and even make hazardous jobs safer. NASA's Robonauts have been launched into space to help perform dangerous tasks, while on Earth, DARPA's robotic challenges have led to the rise of machines that could help or even replace first responders. These self-balancing, or well, not so self-balancing bots could potentially save lives. While fully functional rescue robots are still a ways out, machines that can make everyday tasks easier have already earned their way into our homes and factories. In 2002, iRobot launched the first automated vacuum cleaner, and a decade later, Rethink Robotics introduced a cheery-faced factory worker called Baxter that performs simple tasks on a production line. Whether these machines will be our iron-fisted overlords or obedient helpers is still up in the air, but for now, their ability to aid and augment our lives is undeniable.